welcome to All the Right Marketing, where we talk with business owners and industry leaders about marketing their programs and their products. But really, we're talking about books, right, when it comes down to it. Our guests share tips that help anyone who is um, in love with books, whether you're a librarian, a bookseller, an author, a publisher, but primarily aspiring writers are who listens to this podcast. The truth of the matter here is that the advice coming out of these creative conversations are for marketing across industries. Today's guest, Kirsten, used to work with rocket scientists at NASA. Now she writes books for curious kids. She is the author of several nonfiction picture books, as well as a middle grade graphic nonfiction coming out soon. So we're definitely going to have to hear about that. She's a popular teacher at the Writing Barn, a book coach, and co-founder of the Soaring 20s co-marketing group. Kirsten lives near Los Angeles with her husband. Oh, is a Lhasa Pool? Yeah, she's a Lhasa Apso Poodle mix. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for help with that. And two curious children. Her house is filled with Legos, laughter, and lots of books. It sounds like our house do you step on Lego at any, at any oh, time? Always. And that's the worst torture. And then the big oh. question is, what's the most unusual place you've ever found a Lego? I found one in the freezer once. <laughs> oh, in my purse one time. Oh, there. There was, and I was like, what? And just one, one little Lego in my purse. Right. And it was hair. It was the hair <laughs> of a head of a Lego. Well, welcome. So let's begin with what I'm really curious about is working with rocket scientists in public relations over at NASA. So yeah. I always like to hear about your journey. Um, so maybe you can tell us how NASA, you know, sure. came to your journey and take it off from there. Sure. So actually, um, I started out in journalism. I did some freelancing in high school, and then I worked for my college newspaper and did some freelancing for some local daily newspapers. And then I decided um, being a newspaper woman was not for me. You know, it's a really, um, you're kind of at everybody's beck and call all the time. And I wanted a more regular schedule. So I had an opportunity to do some internships at NASA. And so essentially, since my experience at NASA, I've been a science communicator. Part of my job was trying to figure out how to explain to everyday people all these awesome technologies and discoveries that NASA is making. Um, so I did a lot of work with NASA's aeronautics programs and also with the space shuttle and space station programs. So it was a really exciting experience, but um, it was really great training for trying to figure out how to communicate complicated science topics to kids. Wow, wow. That's amazing. That is amazing. And being uh, a former educator, we appreciate people like you because oftentimes the curriculum gives us this objective that we need to teach these six and seven year olds. I taught first and grade, first grade and second grade. Um, and then there's kind of that lack, there's that space in between. So, okay, this is what I need to teach them. This is how old they are, but how can I really get them that from here to there? Um, on this topic. So I love that. And one of the things that I always did as an educator is I went to children's picture books mm. to help me teach these concepts. So let's continue on your journey. How did writing come into play? Sure. So, you know, I never really considered um, book writing as a career, but when I had my own children, um, I had left NASA to raise my kids. My husband still works for NASA and was working at NASA at the time. Um, and so my kids were always curious about everything. At the time, their dad was working on a program connected with the Mars rover Curiosity. So we would go to the nonfiction section of the public library, and they would just start pulling books off the shelf about space and airplanes and weather and all kinds of stuff. So as I was reading these books with my kids, I thought, you know, I think I could write these books, right? I, I need to figure out how to do this. Um, and so that's that's what I did, starting with um, children's magazines, which helped me get some work for hire experience where publishers would hire me to write book series or parts of nonfiction book series. Um, and all the and all at the same time, I was learning how to write picture books, um, writing my own work, and eventually um, attempting to find an agent and get published. So wonderful. So when did your publishing journey begin? When tell us about that first book? Well, so I think I decided that I wanted to write for children in 2011. That's when I wrote my first horrible magazine article. Um, I think my first work for hire book, I think came out in 2014, maybe. So um, 
I got an agent in 2016 and we sold the first book in 2017. Oh, so listeners love to hear that, like the timeline. So I appreciate you giving us dates to the timelines. Um, so 20, did you say 2018, correct? So 2017 is when I sold the first book, okay. which okay. came out in 2020. So that was um, five, five years after I decided that I wanted to do this. Wonderful. And those were picture books, nonfiction picture books, correct? Yes. Yes. So my and first, then, yeah, the first one was Woodwire Wings, which came out in 2020. With wonderful. Conference. And what a year to come out, right? What a right. <laughs> Which is why market, you will talk about co-marketing groups, very important yes. in a pandemic. <laughs> Absolutely. So then what happened, this is just such a cool journey. Um, you have a book coming out soon. That is, is it a graphic, not middle grade graphic nonfiction, right? Yeah. So I have, yeah, that one is being illustrated right now. I think the pub date was announced as 2023, but you know how this industry yeah. works, right? Okay. We'll see. We'll see if we actually hit that. That um, I have a graphic novel about a real life heroine named Rose of Alland, who was a Parisian um, curator during World War II. And she spied on the Nazis and saved um, like thousands and thousands of artworks um, from destruction by the Nazis. So that actually started out as a picture book. And then my editor said, you know, I think this would make a cool graphic novel. So, oh, no. yeah. So I, I was like, okay, sure. Let's do it. <laughs> That's really neat. We actually, I'm in a book club and we recently read the Rose Code, which was about um, female um, co encoders. They were, you know, um, breaking oh, mm -hmm. codes during World War II and just the female empowerment and how women were such a part of what was happening, but, you know, we didn't really learn about it. Um, right. Always hear about it. So that's, that's really cool. Very neat. So I am very curious about your role in the marketing industry with books because we um, are fans, definite fans of The Writing Barn. So we've heard of The Writing Barn here at Cardinal Rule Press. Tell us a little bit about your, um, in, your involvement at The Writing Barn. Sure, sure. So I teach, um, I've taught a couple of different things for The Writing Barn. Um, I've done, I've, I have taught webinars on nonfiction book structure, right? So kind of moving beyond the narrative 3X structure. Um, I recently, very recently taught a graphic nonfiction webinar, which is sort of a introductory, introductory session to graphic nonfiction, including how to script um, graphic novels. And then um, periodically I teach teach a six week revision class, uh, basically taking your nonfiction picture book and getting it polished. So we focus on structure, we look at voice, we really hone takeaways, we look at page turns. Um, so we kind of go piece by piece through um, your nonfiction picture book and trying to take it to the next level. Wonderful, wonderful. My mother just stopped by. <laughs> okay, so let me just take note of the time for editing purposes. Okay, so we talked about the writing barn and there's another way that you are sharing your experiences and your knowledge with others and that's through, through the Soaring 20s group. So tell us a little bit about that group because I didn't know about it until we met. Sure, um, so the Soaring 20s is a co-marketing group. Uh, I got together with gosh, I don't know how many we started with, maybe 34, 35 um, book creators who were coming out with their first picture books in 2020. So we formed together a couple of years before that. And um, the idea was that we would um, work together, we would cross promote each other's books, um, we would boost each other on social media, um, and that we would do a number of things to try to bring attention to our books together. Wonderful. Now, what happens after that year? So let's say you put together a um, co-marketing group uh, for 2023. And after the year closes, that's always my question is what happens after that? Well, so that is a great, that's a great question. So I'll just take a step back and say that 
different co-marketing groups handle things in different ways. Um, you hear a lot about debut groups, you know, everybody's got their first book coming out. Some of those do dissolve after the year, after that year. Um, we have actually, we've stuck together and we kind, you know, some people have chosen to go their own direction and we've added in more members. Uh, because once you've done all that work to create a website and get following on Twitter and Instagram and to kind of create this name recognition, it seems sort of a waste to then just shut the whole thing down, right? Absolutely, yes. And I mean, what happened to some of us is because of the pandemic and, and all the delays with publishing, some people who were you know, part of our 2020 group, their initial books didn't come out until like August 2021. Right. That's so we've true. actually, it's only been a year since we cleared everybody's first groups, but we've, we've decided to stick together. Um, we've expanded. We have a lot of people that work not only in picture books, but um, middle grade and YA. So we kind of have expanded and we've just um, stuck together and we continue to cross promote each other's books. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. I was going to say the truth of the matter is, you know, writers don't go into writing to self-market. And I think that's what really um, made me passionate about this podcast is I was a writer. I started out as a teacher and then I wrote a book and I thought, okay, well, I didn't go to college for marketing. I know nothing about sales and I don't want to market. I don't want to go out there and say, buy my book, but working together with others, um, well, you can explain why it's better to do it together. So go ahead. I'll give that question to you. Why is it better to market together? Well, I think to your point, um, and this is a very broad generalization, but a lot of us who write are introverts, right? I mean, we we are perfectly content to sit at our computers most of the day and have, you know, whatever small interactions that we have. So yes, shouting by my book is very uncomfortable. So, <laughs> so don't do that, by the way, don't do that. <laughs> So, you know, if you can work with other people and it, it's not buy my book, it's, hey, buy my friend's book, right? The, I've read this book. It is amazing. It is a perfect fit for people who like this type of book. Don't miss it, right? But um, so there's some of that. It makes the social media aspect a little bit better. But also thinking beyond social media, there are a lot of other ways that you can work together. So for example, we have people all over the country and we go to our library systems and say, hey, can you buy these books? And so, you know, I, I have the LA County library system. And if they agree to acquire a Soaring 20s book, they're normally buying 10 to 20 copies, right? And we all know that book school library market sales are a big portion of children's literature sales. Um, we also do honest book reviews, right? So we agree to review each other's books and give them an honest review. And then we can share that on Goodreads. We can put that on Amazon and hopefully influence some of Amazon's algorithms, right? Who knows? <laughs> um, but, but, and one of the other really key things for us, especially during the pandemic, when everything went online, is we had a ready-made group of people who could do book panels on any topic. So we've yeah. presented at the National Science Teachers Association. We've oh. got, you know, some of our STEM creators have gotten together and created panels. Um, we presented at the National Council of Teachers of English, NCTE, on primary source research. Yeah. Um, you know, we've had groups do book festival events on social emotional learning topics. So one of the really um, fantastic things for us was just kind of having this group of go to people that we knew could present on any topic and getting on the roster for books, festivals, school library associations and all kinds of events and sharing opportunities with others, right? So when we hear about something like, oh, you know, the Adirondack Book Festival is currently looking for authors. Does anybody wanna throw their name into the hat? We can share that information and share the ups and downs of the publishing and marketing journey, right? Everybody um, hits speed bumps and obstacles. So it's nice to have a group of people that sort of at the same point on the journey to say, you know, my editor is telling me this, is that, 
is this something you all have experienced or I'm having this, this struggle, you know, is that something that you all have dealt with and how did you deal with it? Wonderful. And I think it sounds like, um, based on what you shared with me, that if individuals sign up for the Soaring 20s newsletter, you then communicate with um, those subscribers on tips in the industry? Or what is that newsletter like? Because I know you get a free getting started guide to um, co-marketing yeah. programs. Yeah. So each month, our newsletter highlights our new book releases, mm -hmm. um, new book deals, cover reveals, events, both virtual and in-person that members of the Soaring 20s are doing. And then when you sign up for the newsletter, you have the opportunity to download a co-marketing group getting started guide it's pretty lengthy and it also has um, a links to a ton of tips on book marketing. That's excellent. That is excellent. You know, we encourage our authors to be part of groups just like the Soaring 20s. And the next question they say to us is, well, how do we get started? And I say, I am not really sure. Um, <laughs> you, you've got to like Google it and find out, but I know they're wonderful and they do a lot of good things for each other. Um, so this is a really great resource that I appreciate. Do you have any final thoughts for our guests today? This is, has been wonderful information. Um, any final thoughts on co-marketing groups? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the easiest way to start is to just start with a couple of people. That's how we started. I think there were three of us initially. We knew we all had books coming out in 2020. And together we could kind of brainstorm, you know, what's what types of skills do we need in the group? What kind of time commitment are we looking for? Um, and we were really committed to finding diverse authors, right? So going beyond just advertising and a lot of the typical um Facebook groups where it's a lot of the same faces over and over again, but making sure that we were reaching out to creators of color um, and so that we could kind of all work together. Um, but, you know, start small, find a couple of friends, figure out what your parameters are, and we'll give you some of those tips in the guide and then um, move from there. And how many members are you up to now? Um, I think right now we're still in the low, we're in the low 30s. We kind of keep it in the low 30s. And my last yeah. question, I didn't ask, I should have asked this before. Do you Perfect. ever meet on Zooms for, you know, kind of uh, networking calls? Yeah, we have, especially, man, especially during the pandemic, when every, you know, the height of the pandemic, when everything was locked, was locked down for sure. We Zoomed, um, we've had Zoom sessions. Um, Christina Suntornavat used to be um, part of the group. She's super busy now that she's uh, got her <laughs> Newberry honors. But, you know, we've gotten together online and shared tips about how to write graphic novels, how mm -hmm. to write chapter books, right? So we've we've kind of, um, and we even have a critique group con component now for creators wow. that are looking for a critique group. So yes, a lot of our, our members are meeting online frequently for various um, reasons. So much community involved there. Well, I really appreciate your time, Kirsten. Thank you so much for being with us today. And for those of you listening, stay tuned for next Tuesday when we have another guest on All the Right Marketing. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.